physical science time, we're going to try again. Let's call it nuclear radiation. I could have just left this out here, I guess. Part two. For posterity's sake, we had talked about that the radiation and radiation, nuclear radiation and electromagnetic radiation are related in that they both radiate out from a central point, and that word also is related to the word radius from a circle. Then we were just in the middle of talking about why nuclear radiation occurs about. So to abbreviate, this is where we got off track last time, nuclear radiation occurs, we're going to abbreviate or review what we had talked about on Friday, oh goodness, occurs due to instability in the nucleus. Effectively, because the nucleus of some atoms is unstable, because the nucleus of some atoms is unstable, chunks fall off it. Either chunks of matter, or they're not really chunks, but or chunks of matter or particles of energy we call photons, and that occurs in large nuclei and in other unstable nuclei. Nuclear radiation occurs in isotopes. Remind me what is an isotope real quick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some certain number of neutrons in an atom, right? Isotopes with an unstable arrangement of if I use this word, can you infer what it means? It says nucleons. Can someone help me infer what that means? Let, let's, uh, Lily said the correct one. Someone else might have too, but Lily said it a little louder, and I'm going to repeat it. The particles inside. Yeah, the two particles that are inside the nucleus, the neutrons and protons. If you need to define that and write it down, that's fine. But you should be aware that this word nucleons is sometimes used to encapsulate both neutrons and protons. So isotopes with an unstable arrangement of both neutrons and protons. Almost any element has isotopes that are unstable, that can be radioactive. Almost every element. I, there are a couple that don't. I think iron doesn't have any, um, any naturally occurring radioactive isotopes, but almost every other element has some radioactive isotopes. Um, so even though, like we said, the little on our periodic table, the little radioactive symbol means that all the isotopes of that are radioactive, almost all of them have some that are radioactive. So for instance, hydrogen. We have, we have, I'm aware of three isotopes of hydrogen. Hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, which is sometimes called deuterium, and hydrogen 3, which is sometimes called tritium. So this is just regular hydrogen. This is sometimes called deuterium. And this is sometimes called tritium. Another thing, as a side note, I'm aware that of these names, I think that these are the only isotopes that have their own special names. And the reason for that is that hydrogen has half the mass of deuterium, right? And so for most of the elements, a difference in isotopes is going to not change its properties very much because it's not going to be that much different other than its nuclear radiation. But for deuterium, this literally doubles the mass of the hydrogen, right? And then this triples it. And so these have special names because they contribute special properties even when it's in other substances. Anyhow, deuterium and tritium these two are both stable, but because of the size of this, just not the size, but because of the arrangement of this, this is inherently unstable, and so this one, just this isotope, is radioactive. And we use this word radioactive to describe any isotope that, uh, what is the word I'm looking for, I can't think of it, it falls apart on its own, what's the word that means that? That it, it, self-destructs is cooler, but that's not what I'm looking for. Um, it, yeah, both of those are fine. That's a better word, probably, than what I was looking for. But radioactive just means that this isotope decays over time. I think speaking of decaying over time, this marker has seen the end of its useful life. Um, radioactive just means that the isotope decays over time. It spontaneously, that's the word I was looking for, it spontaneously falls apart. All on its own, it falls apart because of the way it is. There are some people like that that just spontaneously fall apart because of the way they are. And we can even call them radioactive. We might actually call them toxic. Um, anyway, so why does nuclear radiation occur? Either because you'll notice that the ones that all the isotopes are radioactive are all towards the end, right? Starting with polonium, number 84. Every, every element after that is 
all of its isotopes are radioactive. Do you see that? And that's because they're so big. So big isotopes are inherently unstable in the same way that we talked about a big Lego set is less stable than a small Lego set. Right? If you get the cheap $10 Lego set from Dollar General that I always want to do but I'm afraid I shouldn't, um, if you get that little boy and it's a little police car or whatever and you drop it, it might be fine. Right? But if you get a big Lego set, if you get the Death Star and it's got 15,000 pieces and you drop that, it's going to shatter because at least something's going to fall off. Right? In the same way, the big isotopes are always unstable, where the small ones, some of them are. Right? This is unstable because of its ratio. This is unstable because of its ratio. But these two are both stable, even though they're not much smaller. Okay, do you have questions about that? Why radiation occurs? Um, what forces are at odds here? What, okay, strong force is one. Strong force is doing what to these nucleons? Yeah. The strong force is holding them together. And what force is opposing that? Electromagnetic. So let's write that down. So the strong force is attractive in this case. Why is, we had said that the electromagnetic force can be either attractive or repulsive when we talk about that force on its own. Why in this case is it repulsive? I'm sorry, what did you say, Why? Because the poles are the same. Yeah, because the poles are the same. Because the protons are both positive. Or in this case, the proton is positive. All right, so it's pulling itself apart. But this isn't a great example because there really should be more than one proton for that to be the case. But there's a, there's a constant uh, balance or imbalance, if it's radioactive, of the strong nuclear force and the electromagnetic force. What up when it decays? What goes on? What goes on when it decays? It yeah, it releases, it releases energy, and it sometimes releases matter. And there are several ways that it can do this, and we call these types of radioactivity. I'm going to erase this real quick. Does anyone still, this I just wrote, but is anyone still using the rest of what's up here? Okay, down she goes. Oh. So write down, we're going to have a little table, we're going to write you can title it types of radiation. Sorry, make sure you put in types of nuclear radiation. Why do we have to specify it with that word? Because there's a different kind of radiation. Yeah, because the other kind, electromagnetic radiation, is completely different. Um, there is overlap, but it's a completely different concept. So we're going to label our little chart types of nuclear radiation. And we're going to subtitle this, in parentheses, decay modes. I love this. This is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, that makes me an odd and probably uninteresting person to like it. Or like, like if, if a dude at the gas station gives me half a chance I'm going to tell him about decay modes and he's going to be like, uh, see ya. But in a class it's great because this is my job is to tell you about this. So there are different types of nuclear radiation and we call those also decay modes. The first, we're going to have a little symbol for each. That's going to be one of our columns. Um, we're going to have a, I don't know, let's put like a composition uh, charge, mass. Should we also have a name? Let's put that at the beginning. <laughs> let's put name first. And then we'll put symbol, composition, charge, mass, and we're going to have a little example. All of our examples uh, are going to be what we call a nuclear reaction. Does someone have their Chromebook handy? I do. Yeah. Would you hand it to me? I, I, no, I don't really want to touch it. I'm going to use my own laptop. The, the reason... I don't know. You probably open it up to well, your raising hands. Yeah, I have to use the... I'm going to use something called wikipedia.org for this. I love Wikipedia. If you don't want to talk about Wikipedia with me, you're out of luck. Okay, no, no, she, she's wrong. Okay, we're going to get that there. Wikipedia is one of the best websites that's ever been devised. People who dislike it always say this about it. Anyone can edit it. But that's actually positive because not only can anyone edit it, but it's also moderated. So that you, you could type in, I'm, I was just now reading the article on hyperbola for physics. If I wanted to, I could click edit and I can make it say, 
I can make it say butthead. But then what's going to happen is it's going to, I'm going to go back to this page and it's going to say, oh, it still says hyperbola. I thought anyone could edit this. And then it's going to say, your edit was rejected because it's not good. <laughs> it'll, say, it'll say it nicer than that or better. But effectively, while anyone can edit it, only the good ones get through. So it's this nice little like, filtration system where all the people that actually know what they're talking about can put as much information in here as they want. And all the kids trying to change the words of butthead, that goes away immediately. You see what I mean? Like it, it's really the best. This is, in my opinion, other than the periodic table, one of the best things that humanity has collectively done. That having been said, that's not the point of this video that we're making. The point is we're talking about nuclear radiation. For all of these, we're going to have a nuclear reaction with it. Okay? A nuclear reaction is what happens when nuclear radiation occurs. And we're going to have a special way that we format those. So we're going to have a name, a symbol, a composition, a charge, a mass, and an example. And my marker again is dying, but... Anyway, I'm going to use something called wikipedia.org to type in uh, some examples of elements, specific isotopes that I will find that will undergo each of these. So the first one we're going to talk about, can you guess? Your book talks about several, but not all. Can you guess what the first one we're going to talk about is? Um, can anyone guess what the first one we're going to talk about is? It was a vocab word. Alpha. Alpha decay. Thank you. Alpha. DK. The symbol is the Greek lowercase letter alpha, which looks kind of like the Latin letter A. I, drew, I always draw mine like a little fat fish. Um, I think it looks nice. Composition. Your book has told you this too, so you really should know it, but it's called a helium-4 nucleus. And its symbol, well, another symbol for it is this. I put that in the composition column. Four key. No, 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 Kyle, don't say it like that. What's the four the mean, four though, here? What, do you remember this notation from the last chapter? What's this? Yeah, it's the isotope. It's, it's, the, it's the mass number, right? What's the two mean? Atomic number. And what's the two plus mean? Charge. Charge. And so if we were going to draw this, how many protons does it have? Two. Two. How do you know? Because it's atomic number two. How many neutrons does it have? Two. How do you know? Uh, yeah, its mass number is four, so we must have two neutrons. How many electrons? Be very careful. How many electrons does helium usually have when it's neutral? Two, but in this case it has, that's why it says zero, because it's two plus. So it's just the nucleus of a helium four atom. So it's just this nucleus, okay? I drew the circle, but make sure you know that's not an electron, an electron orbital. So it's just the nucleus of a helium atom. So its charge is what then? Yeah, plus two or two plus, either one's fine. Mass? Four. We're going to use all of these for relative math. We could put four AMU. That's fine, but four is fine also. And an example, um, this is where I'm going to look up our specific example. I know that uranium, I think 238, undergoes this type of nuclear decay. So, um, Uranium 238. Yep. Uranium 238. So I'm going to draw uranium 238 yields thorium 234. Oops, should be capital T plus an alpha particle. So we're going to, and since this is the first one we've done, we're going to look at this more closely. Why did the 238 go down to 234? Because it lost, it lost four from its mass number, right? So if you're, if you want to write down this, you can have a third column saying what it do or something. And what it do is that the mass number went down by four. Do you see why the mass number went down by four? Because an alpha particle has a mass of four, and an alpha particle was ejected. You good on that? Maybe it'll make it a little clearer if I rewrite my alpha particle as the helium four nucleus. Why did it change from uranium to thorium? It, look at where uranium is, number 92, and it lost two protons, so it became thorium. You, you with me so far? Does anyone have questions about that? This, as, a, as another side note, we've got side notes inside the side notes here, but when the type of element, when, for instance, this changed from uranium to thorium, this change in an element, write this down, Mitchell, 
This changing what element it is is called transmutation. What's the prefix trans mean? Someone said transgender. That's one of them. What's the prefix trans mean? It means a cross. So a transvestite is a cross dresser. Transmutation means changing. It's mutating. It's changing from one thing, across one thing to another. Right? So uranium to thorium. That's transmutation. It has changed what element it is. Who wants to change what element it is? What, like what job in the Middle Ages wanted to do that all the time? The, yeah, it wasn't, it, it wasn't officially a science, but an alchemist wanted to change everything to gold, remember that? Transmutation, that's what they were all about. That's what happens all the time, from uranium to thorium. But they weren't, they didn't want thorium, and they didn't know about thorium. But they wanted gold, yeah, yeah, some, lots of stuff. So like, for instance, if we got an isotope of thallium, for instance, thallium is too higher than gold, an isotope of thallium that undergoes alpha decay would turn into gold over time. Wait, so... So, yeah, that would work. Is it cost-effective? Definitely not. Nope. So the whole point the alchemists were trying to do is, like, I got all this dirt slash cow manure slash urine from the peasants. How can I change that into gold? And you can't, right? Because those things don't scientifically transmute. But that's what they wanted. It's something worthless and turn it into something more valuable. But thallium is more valuable than gold, and so it's, it's counterproductive. Anyway, does this little example of a nuclear equation make sense? Do you remember from your book, what do we call this boy in here? The uranium-238, what's he representing here? Isotope. Yeah, the parent isotope. Write that down, please. Parent isotope. Does it make sense why it would be called that? Yeah, because the other thing comes out of there, right? What do we call the one it turns into? The daughter, the daughter isotope. Thank you for remembering. Why do we call it daughter? I have no idea. Daughter isotope. The daughter isotope. And then what is the... What do we call this, this helium nucleus then? That's the what? The decay mode. That's what we call the decay mode. Or the type of nuclear radiation, which come to find out that's what our chart is called. Okay, but we're not talking about that right now because we've got eight minutes to talk about the other five of these. So hold, buckle your seatbelt. Okay, um, the next one, we've got beta decay. We've got two kinds of beta decay. Beta plus and beta minus decay. Symbols, well, it's the Greek letter beta, which is like a B with a tail. And then we put a little plus sign or a minus sign next to it. So far, so good, right? Composition, the beta plus decay is composed of what's called a positron. A positron is antimatter. We're not going to get real deep into what antimatter is. Read about antimatter on Wikipedia sometime. It's really interesting. But basically, antimatter is like normal matter, but it has the opposite charge. So where in normal life, there's a proton with a positive charge orbited by an electron with a negative charge, antimatter would have a negatively charged proton. We still call it a proton, but it's negatively charged, orbited by a positively charged positron. So it's just basically an electron, we even write E, plus. Beta minus decay is an actual, like a real electron, which we write E minus. The charge, this is easy, what's the charge on the positron, do you reckon? Plus one. Plus one, charge on the electron, or the minus, minus. minus one, or the beta minus. Mass, you know this. What's the mass of the electron? Zero. Zero. What's the mass of a positron, then, do you think? Zero. I have to find some examples of this that ain't uranium. We just did uranium. We want it to be a little bit more exciting. Here we go. Molybdenum 99. Oh, this one's beta minus, sorry. Molybdenum 99 undergoes beta minus decay, so it e emits an electron. Sorry, I'm going to illustrate to you here. The decay mode doesn't always have to be first. So if it emits an electron, we could also write, in the same way that we could have wrote, written an alpha here, we could write a beta minus here. Either way is fine, but I'm going to write an electron um, plus. Now, think about this. If it's losing a negative charge from its nucleus, is the mass going to change? Not really. So it's still going to be 99. But now since it lost a negative charge, it, what happens in the nucleus is a proton, no, sorry, a neutron becomes a proton. So now its mass didn't change, 
but it has one more proton. So instead of being molybdenum, it's going to be technetium. 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 So now it's technetium 99. So check it out. In beta minus decay, if you have your what it do column, what did it do? How did the mass change? How did the mass change? No change in mass. So write that in your what it do column, right? No change in mass, but the atomic number did what? Increase 1. Plus 1. Okay, and then for beta plus. Sorry, I'm having to find the beta minus. Give me a second, tell me. We just did beta minus. We're going to do beta plus now. Hopefully, hopefully you didn't write that in the wrong column. I'm sorry. Because we did do them backwards. Possibly. Strontium, sorry, excuse me. Strontium 83 undergoes beta plus to become what? Now, now think about this logically. How's the mass going to change? No, the mass. No change in mass. So it's still going to be 83, except now, instead of being strontium, it'll be rubidium. So in beta plus, the atomic number goes down. In beta plus, in beta plus, a proton becomes a neutron, so a negative charge is yaw. In beta minus, a proton becomes, sorry, in beta minus, a neutron becomes a proton, so a negative charge is yaw. Right? I'm using the past tense of the word ye. Do you guys know the word ye? Okay. So the nucleus is losing these things in both of these cases, okay? Are you with me so far? Yeah. Are you with me so far? Are you, are you, are you writing all this down? Yeah, we do. Okay. The next type is called electron capture. Electron capture. And we abbreviate it with the Greek letter epsilon, which is like a little curly. It's lowercase. Well, it is lowercase. Make it like the size of an O in your text, like it takes up the bottom half of the line. And it's a little curly E. And it looks like that. And this is composed of an electron, but the electron in this case, electron capture. I just wrote the same thing twice. But the, an electron, what happens in this one, which is kind of cool, I think, an electron that's just like hanging out in the probability of cloud in the lowest energy level gets absorbed by the nucleus. And that changes in the same way as beta plus. It changes one of the uh, protons into a neutron. So it has the effect of, oh wait, did I say it right? No, it's the same as beta, I got myself, it's the same as beta minus. So it has an a negative one charge, but it, since it's absorbing it, still no mass change, since it's absorbing it, the uh, atomic number goes up by one. It changes a proton into a neutron. Let me find one that does this. Here we go. Rhodium 101. Rhodium 101 undergoes electron capture, look, plus electron. Because it, the nucleus itself has absorbed an electron. So in this case, the rhodium plus an electron is going to yield what? Well, if it's absorbing an electron, what's going to happen to its atomic number? It'll go up. Is that right? Let me see. So from rhodium, it becomes ruthenium. It goes down one. So it absorbs an electron, which makes the proton turn into a neutron, which makes the atomic number go down. We're running out of time. Spontaneous fission. Spontaneous fission. What's the word fission mean? It was one of your vocab words. It means... No, no, that's fusion. Fission means fall apart. Fall apart. Spontaneous fission means it falls apart. And what comes out, no one knows. What? So for instance, you're, for instance, uranium-235 undergoes spontaneous fission. That may not be true. It might be uranium-238. But it just falls apart into two random nuclei. Stay here, please, with me for a second. It falls apart into two random nuclei that you have no way of knowing. So in the same way that if I drop my Death Star model made of Legos, I don't know if one half is going to be half and half, or like 10% and 90%. Bye, Parker. <laughs> The last one is gamma rays. <laughs>
fill it in on your own. Have a good rest of your day. Gamma rays, gamma rays, gamma rays, gamma rays. No mass. Gamma rays have no mass and no charge. That makes it easy. They have no charge and no mass, so whatever it was is still what it is. I wish I had done this faster. Thank you for being good students. Have a nice rest of your day. Bye.